Mount Etna has woke up again. It is one of the most largest and the most active volcanoes in Italy and the whole world. Have you heard of this volcano? Well, think of the people of Italy. Why with such a risk are they still living here? To know more about it, let's learn about the physical features of Europe. In our last lesson, we learned about the political divisions of the continent of Europe. In this lesson, we will be concentrating and understanding about the physical divisions of Europe. Now, the physical divisions of Europe can be divided under four categories, namely the Northwestern Highlands right at the top or at the northern part of the continent. Right south to it, we have the Central Plains covering the entire or most of the land area of the continent. Followed by the Central Plains, we have the Central Highlands right here. And finally, we have the Alpine Mountain System. We will be learning about each of them in details as we proceed. Let's first climb to the very top, that is, to the Northwestern Highlands. Northwestern Highlands are right here, right? And these have a special name, which we will be learning about. Yes, the Northwestern Highlands are also known as the Scandinavian Highlands. Now, if you remember from the last lesson, all these countries here, or most of them here, are a part of Scandinavia or Scandinavian countries. Yes, so the Northwestern Highlands are also known as the Scandinavian Highlands. Now, these Scandinavian Highlands cover these countries, namely Iceland, Ireland, Scotland, Norway, Sweden and Finland. Let's have a peek into the beauty of Scandinavian Highlands. Yes, the Scandinavian Highlands is one of the most oldest highlands of the continent of Europe. It is known for its scenic beauty and for its dangerous yet adventurous road climbs. It also has land formations which are as old as Earth. Now, as I just mentioned, the Northwestern Highlands are old fold mountains and these are made up of hard and crystalline rocks. Well, these hard and crystalline rocks in the Northwestern Highlands are a result of the glacial erosion. Now, what do we mean by glacial erosion? Well, when glaciers receded over these areas, they shaped these areas or eroded them to become hard and crystalline. So we need to remember that the Northwestern Highlands are old fold mountains and also they are hard and crystalline rocks because they are a result or they have been shaped by glacial erosion. Now, as a result of glacial erosion, when the glaciers receded over these areas, they also left behind marshlands, lakes and fjords. Now, talking about lakes, let's talk about the land of a thousand lakes. Yes, Finland is known as the land of a thousand lakes and here we have Finland in the continent of Europe. Now, why do you think this name is given to Finland? Well, it is quite justified because Finland has more than 50,000 lakes in its territory. Now, glaciation or glacial erosion has also left behind lakes and we just learned about the land of a thousand lakes. Well, another two very important lakes are Lake Ladoga right here and Lake Onega right here and these two lakes are important freshwater lakes of Europe. Now these two lakes are also an example of glacial lakes, right? It would also interest you to know that the land of a thousand lakes, that is Finland, has the fourth largest lake in Europe, that is Lake Saima. Now, the water from Lake Saima actually drains into Lake Ladoga. 
So we need to remember that as a result of glacial erosions, there were formations of marshlands, lakes and fjords. So here we have learnt about two important lakes and these two lakes are freshwater lakes and we also learnt about the land of a thousand lakes. Now, glacial erosion has also led to the formation of fjords. Now, what exactly is a fjord? A fjord is a narrow, deep inlet of the sea surrounded by high, rugged cliffs. Now, in this video, we'll be able to understand what is a fjord. Now, as the glaciers recede, they lead to a narrow, deep inlet of the sea. So the land here breaks off eventually due to erosion and the sea water enters into this deep inlet leading to the formation of fjord. Now these fjords have made the European coastline highly indented, thereby forming many natural harbors. So the formation of these fjords have made the coastline of Europe highly indented. Talking about fjords, we cannot do away without mentioning the Scandinavian fjords. Well, Scandinavia is known for its beautiful fjords and these fjords have led to the formation of natural harbors, as you can see here in this picture, which are economically beneficial for any country and so for the continent of Europe. Now the indented coastline of Europe is also a result of the presence of estuaries. Now what exactly is an estuary? Well, to define estuary we could say that it is a partially enclosed body of water formed where the fresh water from the land meets with the salt water from the ocean. Now here is a glimpse of an estuary. So as you can see here, this particular region is a place or a junction where the fresh water from the land, say form a river and the salt water from the ocean or a larger water body like sea meets here and this leads to the formation of an estuary which is partially enclosed body of water. So these estuaries have also made the coastline quite indented. Now, to take an example of estuaries, let's look at the indented coastline of Scotland, or to be more specific, the eastern coast of Scotland. Now you see that the Firth of Forth, Tay and Moray, that is right here, here and here, are estuaries on the eastern coast of Scotland and these estuaries have made the coastline highly indented, right? Now these highly indented coastlines also lead to the formation of natural harbours which are economically beneficial. So here we understood what is an estuary. Well, the Gironde is the largest estuary in Europe. It is right here. Now what's so interesting about this particular estuary? More than a million litres of water flows through estuary of Gironde from the continent of Europe into the Atlantic Ocean per second. So we must remember that the Gironde is the largest estuary in Europe and the glimpse of which is right here. So before moving on, could you help me answer this question? Name the largest estuary in Europe. Is it the Firth of Forth, the Firth of Moray, Gironde, or the Firth of Tay? Yes, we just learnt that the estuary of Gironde is the largest estuary in Europe. So here we learnt about the first physical division of Europe, and that is the Northwestern Highlands, that is right here at the top. Let's learn about the second physical division of Europe and that is the Central Plains. As you can see here, the Central Plains covers most of the area of the continent of Europe. So it stretches from the southeastern part of the United Kingdom and the Atlantic coast in the west to the Russia in the east. So let's learn more about this second physical division that is the Central Plains. The continent of Europe has a number of lowlands over which many rivers flow. 
Well, the central plains too have many rivers flowing over it and these large rivers have left behind glacial deposits. So, the central plains have a lot of glacial deposits which have been deposited by large rivers like Rhine, Danube, Dnieper, Don, Volga and Ural. So now let's name all the rivers, the major rivers that flow over the continent of Europe. Let's start with Seine, Rhone, Rhine, Elbe, Oder, Vitsula, Dnieper, Danube, Don, Volga and Ural. So these are the major rivers that flow over the continent of Europe out of which central plains have been formed by the glacial deposits of these particular rivers. Now the glacial deposits of all those large rivers have made the plains very very fertile or agriculturally rich. So we find a lot of agricultural fields over the central plains. We also find inland waterways and hydroelectric station out of which here is an image of the Volga hydroelectric station which is the largest hydroelectric station in the continent of Europe. Other than that, because of these favorable conditions present on the central plains, it makes the plains densely populated region of Europe. Now these huge central plains also consist of many small plains. Now let's name them. So the small plains here are Andalusia, Lombardy, Paris Basin, London Basin, Hungarian Plain and Wallachian Plain. So these small plains are just a part of the huge central plains. Now let me tell you something interesting. Now you must have noticed the North Sea, the Baltic Sea and the White Sea here. But do you know that these three are actually the submerged portions of the central plains. So we must remember that the North Sea right here, the Baltic Sea right here and finally the White Sea right here represent the submerged portion of the central plains. So here we were able to understand the central plains that is the second physical division of Europe. So in this lesson we learned about the physical division of Europe. We learned that the physical features of Europe can be divided or categorized under four different headings. That is the northwestern highlands in the top followed by the central plains right here, then the central highlands and the alpine mountain system. In this lesson we learned about the first two physical divisions of Europe. In our preceding lesson or in our next lesson, we will be learning about the rest physical division of Europe. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.